welcome back to my channel. It is so lovely to have you here. Um, hello to any new subscribers, welcome. Um, this is my channel, funnily enough, where um, I share all things to do with living a handmade, homegrown and slow life. Um, we share things from making our own clothes, knitting, sewing, etc., to gardening and vlogging and baking and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, so make sure you hit that subscribe button um, because there's so many exciting things coming up. I've got lots of things coming up in the next few months that are going to be really, really great. Um, I can't actually talk about any of it right now, um, but there is some great stuff coming. Um, so yeah, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Today is going to be a really good old fashioned what I got for my birthday video. If like me, you are somebody who's been watching YouTube since like 2009, when it first started to become like an actual thing, um, then you will remember these videos. And I used to absolutely love watching these videos, what I got for Christmas, what I got for my birthday kind of videos. Um, so I thought I would do a good old fashioned one because a lot of what I got for my birthday uh, from my family is very much cottage core. <laughs> Um, they are very much enabling my best cottage core life. So um, I really thought that you guys might enjoy just seeing a few of the things that I got. I'm not going to show absolutely everything, um, but I have got quite a few bits to show you actually. <laughs> um, and one of them is uh, actually outside. So I think I've got a clip of that somewhere or a photo that I will talk about in a bit. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for all of the love on my last video about my birthday dress. I'll link it in the description below if you've not seen it. I made my dream cottage core um, dress for my birthday party, my 30th birthday party. Um, it was a beautiful maxi dress, peasant style dress with blue flowers all over it. And I knitted a cardigan as well to go with it. And the whole outfit was just perfect. It came out exactly as I dreamed and I imagined, um, which is always the best best when that happens. So thank you so much to everybody else who um, commented on that and enjoyed seeing the making process of that. Um, so yeah, um, go and check that out if you've not seen it yet. I think we should just get started with all of the presents, don't you? <laughs> because there are actually, to be fair, quite a few uh, presents to get through. I was a very, very lucky girl. And I was given lots and lots of lovely presents um, for my birthday. I wasn't expecting it at all. People came to the party and they brought presents. <laughs> um, and I had told people not to buy me presents, but they bought me presents anyway. But they bought me the most lovely presents. And I really wanted to show you that. I feel like I've said presents a hundred times now. So I'm going to stop saying the word presents. <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna get started. So the closest thing to me is actually these cabbage bowls. Um, I have absolutely loved the sort of cabbage bowl trend that's come back in style um, recently, I'd say in the last few years, it's become popular again. They used to be very popular in the 70s and I've been looking out for vintage antique versions in charity shops and in the auction and secondhand and I just can't find any. And the new ones that are being produced now um, are quite expensive. I've seen them at Bertha Garden Centre, which is close to where we live and I absolutely love them, but they were just really pricey. And then Marks and Spencers brought these out and um, I think it might have been Lauren McDermott who shared these on her Instagram um I can't remember somebody shared them on their Instagram and I was like those are absolutely gorgeous and they were a reasonable price so I just popped them on my birthday list and my lovely sister-in-law and her partner got these for me so I've got the large white one which I think will be really lovely for salads and things. Um, you could get this in green as well, but I decided to go with um, the white color just because I thought it was quite nice and fresh. And then I got the green, the small one in the green, which I absolutely love. So I think these are gonna be so pretty on the table, you know, when you're like a spring table, um, decoration. A lot of people were using these cabbage plates for their Easter table decorations. Um, 
which eventually I'd quite like some cabbage plates, but we don't really have the space in our house right now to be having loads and loads and loads of plates. Um, I have actually got some lovely vintage plates, which I bought for my party from the charity shop. I collected 30 secondhand vintage plates. Um, so I've now got all of those as well. So those are quite cute. But yeah, I'm really excited to use these over the summer and start sort of styling them up and, you know, putting different things in them. Obviously, you could use this one like a fruit bowl if you wanted to or as I say like a big salad bowl um this one's a little bit smaller so you know something like you know dips or couscous or whatever um so yeah I'm really excited to start using those I think they probably need a wash first um so I will put them <laughs> over there to be washed <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I got, which is closest to me, is a Sussex Trug. Now, I have wanted one of these for ages. If you don't know what one of these are, Sussex Trugs are a heritage product. They've been made in Sussex like this for, oh gosh, I think, for like, what does it say? It actually says on here, from 1820, um, they started making these. Okay, so like 200 years they've been making these trugs in Sussex in this very traditional way um they were you know like essential for farm workers and people growing their own food and stuff back in the day now they tend to just be kept by people who you know like me grow vegetables in the back garden or on an allotment because they're just so good for collecting your food they've got these little feet on them as well so you can put them down quite easily um and I've just been wanting one for ages but they are a bit of an investment because there's something that's basically going to last you possibly your whole life if you take care of it and you keep it in the right kind of storage place and you use I think they've said like linseed oil on it or something um to keep it going so uh my parents-in-law very kindly got me this lovely Sussex trug and I am so excited to use it this year I've got all sorts of things growing in the greenhouse at the moment that will be planted out cucumbers courgettes uh, raspberries, strawberries, salads, squashes, all sorts of things that I'm growing this year, apples. So I'm really excited to be collecting them up in my little Sussex trug. Um, and then the other thing that they got me that goes very well with the Sussex trug is, um, a potting table so I asked for a potting table with a little cupboard underneath it we don't have space in our garden it's quite a small garden we don't have space for a shed we probably could have got a very small shed like a very narrow shed um, but I thought actually a potting table with a space underneath it like a cupboard and a space to keep compost and pots and things like that would be really really useful I also have a small greenhouse that my husband bought me a couple of years ago for my birthday um, and so the two of them next to each other I will get a bit of footage of that for you to see um they look so cute in the garden especially against our new fence that we had put in last summer um and i've already used it i've already potted up uh like potted on tomato plants i've planted a bunch of seeds on there at the weekend <laughs> so it's already getting a lot of use and um i absolutely love it and yeah it's something that i'll obviously be able to take with me to the next house when we move hopefully next year um so yeah, um, two lovely gardening things. And continuing with the gardening theme, my sister-in-law got me these really gorgeous gardening gloves. So I have a bit of a thing for bees. I think quite a lot of people do. Um, but yeah, I really love things covered in bees. We have like our dog bed for pearls got bees on it. I've got bedding with bees on it. I've got shoes with bees on, a water bottle, <laughs> uh, the curtains and the blind in the living room and the cushions, like literally so many bees. Um, so she got me these lovely gardening gloves, which I really needed some new gardening gloves. And these are like proper, you know, like industrial thorn resistant ones that are going to be really good um, for working in the garden. So those will definitely get lots of use this summer. And then she also got me this which is a really good high quality pair of secateurs, which I am super, super happy with. They're Kenton Stowe and we have, um, we have uh, like a shovel and a fork and I think a rake, which are all Kenton Stowe, like wooden handled, really high quality metal gardening tools. Um, so these are gonna last me a while. Um, I think basically I just need to keep better 
care of them than I did my last secateurs. My last secateurs were quite cheap, but like I accidentally kept them outside at one point and they got rusty and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to look after these, especially now I have my new potting table. They can go in the drawer in there um, and they will definitely come in use this year um, with all the pruning that I'm going to have to do with the apple trees and the roses. And then also eventually, hopefully, um, once my dahlias start flowering and I can start collecting up my dahlias these will be really, really useful for that. So I'm so pleased with those. So some really great useful birthday presents that I'm going to be able to use for years and years to come. Um, and now moving on to more sort of home makey stuff. I'm trying to like grab this box here. Um, this was from my sisters. Um, I asked for a preserving kit because one of the skills I would like to learn this year um, is chutney and jam making. If you are new to following me and you haven't seen my previous videos, um, I set myself the challenge this year that in 2024, I would learn a new skill every single month. So I would pick like a different thing to learn. So in January, I learned how to make focaccia bread. In February, I learned how to make uh, Roman blinds and I made two Roman blinds for the house. Um, and in March, I started learning how to make sourdough. Now, obviously these skills I'm not perfecting in a month. It's not about that. It's just simply that there are things that I've really, really wanted to learn and so to sort of encourage me to actually give myself the time to learn them, I pick one thing a month to do, um, which I found really helpful to just kind of centre me a little bit and focus on, you know, like, rather than having all these things I want to do and just never getting around to them. Um, you know, there are things like, so with the focaccia, I wasn't the biggest fan, um, but now I know how to do it and I can do it. The blind making is obviously a really useful skill that I'll be able to use again and again and again. Um, you know, in our next house, I would imagine we'll be making blinds as well. And um, the sourdough, I now make sourdough every week and obviously I'm hopefully get better each time. Um, so chutney and jam making is on the list, especially as I am hoping for a glut of delicious homegrown vegetables. I'm growing six tomato plants this year, which I think is the most I can get in my tiny garden, plus at least two courgettes, possibly maybe more, and some cucumbers and things like that. So I'm hoping I'll be able to make some courgette chutney. Often with courgettes, you get such a massive glut of them, don't you? Um, I'm also growing a lot of strawberry plants, so I'm hoping to make at least one jar of my own strawberry jam however you do need a lot of strawberries for strawberry jam so I really don't know if that's gonna happen but I'm really excited to use this kit it comes with mason jars it comes with the big clampy thing to get <laughs> to get the jar out of the hot because basically to to um seal a jar with a preserve in it you have to put it in a boiling hot a pan of boiling hot water and that helps seal it so you need to be able to like lift it out um and leave it to cool and that helps it seal so that's what this big like claw thing is. So <laughs> I know what I'm saying, <laughs> but basically I've got this preserving kit. So I'm really excited to have a go at that because for Christmas, I also got the River Cottage preserving handbook off my sister who bought me this kit um, with all the recipes in for all sorts of different things. Um, so this is going to be a really useful one to pop away in um, until the summertime, I think. Um, so I'll just pop that down. <laughs> because it's actually quite heavy um and now we're going to move on to books I've got a nice big pile of books this happens every Christmas and birthday because I'm a big reader and I love books like my favorite thing ever is to like be taken into a bookshop um for my birthday and be like right off you go here's your budget <laughs> that's like the best thing ever um that didn't happen people bought me lovely books um the first one isn't really a book this is actually a garden journal that my sister-in-law bought me um it she also bought me the gloves and the secateurs um and i absolutely love this it is just gorgeous look at this and it has all these different section sections so you have planning and design and then you have planting and then it's split into all the different seasons with advice on what you need to do and you can write lists of what you need to do um so obviously we're fairly at the beginning of the season however I have decided to save this until next year because I didn't get it until April I wouldn't start using it until May really because my birthday's the middle of April 
and I was like that seems really a shame to like not use the spring section um, and so I've decided to use it when I've got a whole year of growing um, and I'm just going to put it aside I think until next year because I want to really enjoy using this because it's such a beautiful garden journal um, so I might use it next year or I may even save it um a few years because we are hoping to move house next year to a bigger house um with a bigger garden and um the hope would be that i could then follow a whole year in my bigger garden of planting and growing a lot more than i currently do because at the moment we live in a garden uh, we live in a garden we live in a house with an eight meter by four meter garden which is about 27 foot by 13 foot if you work in feet which is actually very small <laughs> and we produce as much as we can there but also we have to leave space for the dog and things like that so um yeah we do our best with it but I am hoping for a bigger space next year so cross your fingers for me <laughs> Um, now on to books. Now this was a wonderful gift from um, my old, um, old, she doesn't like it when I say that, my drama teacher when I was at school. Um, we've stayed very good friends. She came to my wedding and she came to my 30th birthday party and she bought me this amazing book and I am so pleased with it. It's so cool. So I'll just read out some of the books that are like the knits are inspired from. So there's The Great Gatsby, Wuthering Heights, Anna Karenina, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, A Room with a View, Pride and Prejudice, Anne of Green Gables, The Golden Compass, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and then a lot more. And basically it's just knit, knit, I can't speak, knitting patterns um, inspired by um, literary books. Um, and I absolutely love reading, as I said, I read a lot. Um, I'm a big fan of classic literature. And so I just absolutely love this. This is such a great present, it's so cool. And there are so many really nice um, things in here that I'm already really interested in doing. So I think these ones in particular, is there a picture? These mittens, which are the Meg mittens from Little Women with a little bow on them, those are definitely high on my list. But there's also like super cute little hats and there's also um, some shawls and things, just some really, really nice patterns. So I'm really excited to have a proper look at that and maybe knit a few things from that this year. Um, so that is a really cool present. Then I also got this. Um, which is Epic Homesteading, uh, your guide to self-sufficiency on a modern high-tech backyard homestead. And I just thought that sounded quite interesting um, because the pictures and stuff that are shared, it doesn't look like a particularly huge plot of land. Um, and as I said, our plot of land is obviously quite small. Um, and so I just thought this sounded like an interesting book. Um, I thought it might be fun to read and dip in and out of and learn some stuff that I might be able to implement in my own garden, either this one or the next one um and as you guys know learning to homestead is like my my thing I sort of do a mini homestead in the house that we currently live in I do as much as I can where we currently live but I would like to become more self-sufficient as the years go on so I'm hoping this book is going to be quite a useful one for that and then this next book my brother got me, which is The Sourdough School. This was recommended by Lauren McDermott. Um, I'm a big fan of her Instagram. I saw that she started making sourdough bread and she started sharing sort of like her tips and stuff. And basically she said this book was exactly what she needed. Um, I'm planning to read it from like cover to cover because although it's got lots of recipes in it, at least half of it is just basically information about how to best keep your your sourdough starter how to bake the best bread what to look for knowing your grains all that different stuff so there's so much information to learn so I'm really looking forward to reading that one at some point um I need to I think I'm going to read that fairly soon because I've obviously started making sourdough every week and I want to keep improving and improving and improving so hopefully I can learn quite a lot from this um just to say this is by Vanessa Kimball if you're interested I will let you know, um, probably on my Substack actually, um, I will talk about whether or not this is worth reading <laughs> eventually when I've actually read it. Um, 
just probably a good place to say that I have a Substack. Um, thank you so much to everybody who has become a paid subscriber. It really does help me to keep creating content, especially now that I have actually left um, my job and I've gone completely freelance. It's a really great way to support me financially. Um, so thank you so much to everybody who signed up to that. I will leave the link to my Substack in the description below if you are interested in checking that out. I share lots and lots of articles, a weekly article, all about living a handmade homegrown and slow life. There are things from how to, you know, tips and tricks to feature articles on people living a handmade homegrown life, people who are, you know, like shepherdesses or yarn producers or, you know, running their own orchards or flower farms or any of that kind of stuff. When you subscribe and you become a paying subscriber, you actually get access to the archive of paid articles so you can go back and check all of those out as well as getting your new one into your inbox every single week always comes out on a thursday at 6 a.m in the morning uk time it comes into everybody's inbox um so yeah check that out if that's something that you might be interested in and you would like to support me um, and my content work i so appreciate it and i would love to have you guys over there so the final book that I have to show you and the final present that I have to show you is Quilting by Hand. Um, and this is by Rianne Elise. This was a present from my godmother. Um, I have been wanting to learn how to quilt for quite a while. Um, and I'm particularly interested in learning to quilt from hand, um, by hand, sorry. Um, my neighbour, um, who actually I've got an article on my Substack coming out all about her amazing shepherd's hut in the next few weeks. Um, she is an artist and she's worked a lot in embroidery and um, textile design and she is very big on hand um, quilting and hand embroidery and I wanted to learn to quilt and I sort of assumed I would do it on a machine but after talking to her I felt really inspired to have a go at hand quilting. So I think probably what I will do is I will sew together the pieces for patchwork and things like that but I will probably do the actual quilting i.e the stitches that go through all the different layers to make give it that quilted effect I'm going to do that by hand and I think um that's going to be a really lovely meditative process and so I think this book will be really interesting to read I'm not sure how much exactly is by hand I don't know if she's actually sewing all of the pieces together by hand as well so it will be really interesting to see what um she has to say um but yeah, I'm really excited by this book. It's a really beautiful book as well. Like, I mean, the illustrations and the illustrations, the photos and things in it are just beautiful. And there's a lot of, um, you know, like different information in there, um, all different kind of stuff. I am tempted with my first quilt to trial just using one like not patchworking basically and just using one fabric for the front and one fabric for the back make like a mini quilt kind of thing um and try hand quilting just so I can sort of learn what I'm doing that tends to be my standard thing when I learned a new craft is to make something small so when I learned to knit I started making baby cardigans and um recently I started doing some needle felting and with crochet I started crocheting uh coasters and pumpkins and I tend to go with something really small so that it's a project that you can complete fairly quickly and have that sense of achievement but also like learn the skills that you need to learn um, so I might make a small quilt soon, um, as I say, that's just one piece of fabric and just do the quilting. But we shall see. I'm very excited. I'll read the book first, probably, and then make my decision about what I'm going to do. OK, so that is everything that I have to show you that I got for my birthday. I did get some other lovely bits um, from people, um, but I decided not to show absolutely everything. Otherwise, we probably would have been here all week, um, which is really, really lovely um, to have so many lovely, gorgeous gifts. Um, so thank you so much to everybody um, who came to my party and bought me lovely things. If you're watching this, I really appreciate everything that you've given me and they will be used for years and years and years to come. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys maybe got some ideas for some great sort of homesteady cottage core style gifts for either yourself that you could put on your own birthday list or perhaps you could buy for somebody else who's into sort of homestead cottage core life. Um, I hope this was a helpful video for you. Um, as I said lots of exciting things coming up so make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Um, I will be sharing lots of videos over the next few months on living a 
handmade homegrown and slow life and i would absolutely love to have you here for that um, and i will leave all of the information to my Substack and everything in the description below and my instagram in case you want to follow over there as well um so yeah thanks so much for watching guys i will see you next time bye